lovelies, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a really, really long time, kind of, since I've actually sat in front of the camera like this and just spoken. And I do miss it, I do really, really miss it, but it does make me anxious not being on here with a guest. But I'm back, I have a lot, a lot, a lot of fashion content planned, like fashion story times, fashion dressing up hauls, like fashion advice since I work in the industry. I'm just talking to you guys about that real everyday life that I kind of do and give me that raw and unfiltered perspective on what the industry is actually like but yeah without further ado that's enough of my rambling today we're going to speak about gap years if I think they're a good idea if they're a bad idea what I would necessarily done differently on my gap year and just give you that perspective that you might need when you've just finished graduating or when you've just finished like kind of like just finished your A-levels and don't know whatever you want to do next that's what I'm here to talk to you about today so let's get into it Please leave a comment and a like down below. Oh my gosh, my camera died, guys. How actually oh, annoying. But um, please leave a comment and a like down below because they really contribute to like me wanting to make videos and me just feeling like I'm helping somebody. I really just want to be helping people. So yeah, please leave a comment and a like and a subscription down below. And yeah, let's get into the video. So recently, I think I should start by explaining what a gap is so a gap year is like a period of time that you take out this is not google's definition i'll put google's definition down below but it's a gap year is like a period of time you take out between studying to just like all like i don't know if you take it out between working maybe you can but um, in my opinion and in what i'm talking about today it's about in between studying we just take out some time to just figure out what you want to do it can be for a year it can be for two years i didn't actually know at the start of my a levels or anything that I actually was going to take a gap year. I thought I was going to just go straight to school, but that kind of changed towards the end of A levels with COVID and everything like that. But mm, that's another story. But yeah, um, so a gap year is like an extended amount of time that you take out to just like figure yourself out, to travel, to do anything you want to do. I don't necessarily travel in mind, but like that's what people do in their gap years. And yeah, you just do it after school and just, yeah, just take the time to do whatever it is you want to do and just kind of figure it out and then like after the year kind of reconvene on what might be happening next, if that makes sense, if that makes sense. I'll put Google's definition below as well because, yeah, I'm not Google, but that's how I would explain it in my own professional opinion. So yeah, so now that I've kind of gone over what a gap year is, let's get into the thick of the video and actually explain what happened. So um, I did my A-levels and then I was thinking about going to work at university, didn't end up going to work at university and changed my mind and said I wanted to King's College. Um, and then September, and then results day came, and then that kind of all changed. I got really, um, I want to use the word depressed lightly. I don't think you should use the word depressed, like, easily. I could get out of bed and stuff like that, and I know some people have it a lot worse, but I just was not motivated at all. I did not want to study, I didn't really want to look at another book. Like, I literally ploughed myself through my A-levels, and I left with good grades. I got three A's, no, I got two A's and two B's. <laughs> which for me is really good, um, I know it might not be the best for everybody, but <laughs> I was really happy with it. But yeah, that's what I left with, and kind of after my, um, after I got my results and everything, I kind of was just not, I just didn't want to look at another book, I didn't want to study, I wasn't motivated to study, I wasn't motivated to get up for school, like, especially towards the end of my A-level, like, studying tenure, I just didn't want to do anything. So I just knew at that current moment, if I went to university, I probably would have failed or I probably would have dropped out. Like, it was not looking like the vibe at all. Um, luckily... My brother, who is obviously a few years older than me, if you've been watching my channel for a little while or listen to the podcast, you probably hear me talk about my brother a lot. But yeah, like my brother's like my best friend ever. And like through doing a lot of conversations with him, like I kind of decided that the best thing for me would be to take a gap year. So I ended up deferring King's College for a year. And King's were really good about it. They just asked me to send a letter about why I like wanted to defer. And I sent them a letter, they were really cool about it. And they were like, yeah, that's cool, just come on next year. So yeah, I'm going this year. But um, that's kind of how the whole gap year thing for me kind of came about. I just wasn't really happy. Education wasn't really looking like the vibe for me. And I didn't actually exactly know what I wanted for myself and what I wanted out of my degree. I didn't really have like a clear direction after I finished studying. And I know some people go to university when they don't know what they want to do exactly. But I kind of, I'm a big planner. So I prefer to know exactly what it is that's coming next, kind of. I know you can never ever know exactly what's coming next. I prefer to kind of know what to expect next up after I finish things, which is why I decided to like not take myself to uni straight away. But realistically, as the story goes on, we'll kind of hear that doesn't that didn't really go to plan because I went into my gap year eyes wide open but wide shut. I didn't really have a plan. 
Cool, so let's now discuss the plan. Um, what was the plan? I knew it was fashion that I wanted to work in and I had my eyes set on it. I had already been working in the industry for the past three or four years, I would say. So I was like 15 years old, so. I'm 19 now. So for the past, for the past three years I already did work in the industry. I've been doing work with a New York company. So I was working in, I was working with New York, um, doing work with them. Um, and working for an editorial team in New York. Um, it was great fun. I was doing it during my A-levels at the same time, but obviously my A-levels were a bit different to what traditional A-levels kind of are because everything was remote. So I was able to do that work and complete my A-levels at the same time. It was very, very hard, but I was very determined to kind of like keep going with that, keep persevering with that, but also leave school with something really good. So yeah. Luckily everything was online so I didn't really need to be in school like that so it was very naughty what I did, I don't recommend, I do recommend doing it, I'm not gonna lie, I do recommend doing it, if you can do it and if you can handle it then by all means do it because you know, my thing was that London wasn't very receptive to me when I was trying to break in as a 15, 16, 17 year old but New York was so I had to, my role always told me go where you're appreciated not tolerated so I had to go where they would appreciate me and I had a lot of good ideas, I will never water down who I am as a person or what I bring to a company as a person. So I've always worked hard and I've always known I had really good ideas. So I just went to a place where I knew the ideas would be reciprocated. So um yeah. So after doing all my work with like New York and like completing my A-levels, I kind of thought, okay, cool, like I've done this editorial thing for a bit of time, I've been writing. I've always loved writing because my my biggest love is Ugly Betty in terms of like fashion that looks like Ugly Betty and aspire to kind of do the Ugly Betty thing. You know, ethnic minority work in the publication. I'm an ethnic minority. I always work in the publication. I grew up loving Vogue, Elle, Harper's Bazaar, all this type of things. So like, it was kind of always what I wanted to do. But I kind of like been doing it and I wanted more. And now that obviously school's over, I could do it in like a more full time capacity. So I said that the best thing to me would be to go and land an internship and land one at Condé Nast Glamour. So that was when my first kind of start into the gap year kind of went. Sorry that I was really slow, I was like trying to think of the words in my head. But yeah, um, so the first thing I did during my gap year was get an internship at Condé Nast Glamour and I loved the Glamour team. The Glamour team was amazing. I actually um, was really lucky in the way I got the internship and it was just a great start to my gap year, like working with that team, they're amazing, you're, if they're like so easy to learn from, they're such good friends of mine now, some of them, and like that was really the start of my gap year, but my gap year was not all smooth sailing as I'm about to get into it, and this is where it comes into do I recommend it or do I not, or don't I, if that makes sense. So obviously as I had previously said, um, I always wanted to do editorial, I always wanted to write for a magazine, I always wanted to, wanted to work for like a paper, so I really really started like my career wanting to work in fashion journalism, wanting to be a fashion editor, and I did for a bit. Um, some would say I still am, I would say I still am kind of a fashion editor because obviously I have my own blog, but more it's like a fashion blog if I don't work for a paper. But yeah, I'm a fashion blogger, so I'm still doing what I love, but I'm just doing it for myself. And that was my thing with like working for a magazine or stuff like that, like it's very, um, it's very hard to for me to want to work for a magazine, just because I see the love for print is kind of dying. And obviously like with being sustainable, with seeing the trees, you can't really print as many magazines, so it's kind of changing. What a fashion editor was like five years ago is very different to what a fashion editor is now in terms of like the work they do, how many issues of a magazine come out. So I kind of knew that I had to roll with the punches and know that, okay cool, so this might not be what I wanted it to be when I first like looked at working in fashion, so how am I going to transition that into moving into something more different? So I decided to fashion adventure and this is where the gap year really took a turn. Took a turn for the worst at the time I'd say, but actually a long term thinking about it, I think it was the best thing that could have happened to me. So yeah, best thing, worst thing, I know this might be feeling a bit like all jumpy at the time and I hope it, I wanted it to be as cohesive as I can but then I also want it to be authentic and explain my story and explain like at the end what I think. Okay cool, so then after kind of seeing that editorial wasn't what it once was and how it's never really going to be the same and obviously I still have a love for it but like maybe I should pursue other avenues I kind of went into, not kind of, I went into digital and luxury so this is really where I discovered my love of luxury fashion and for that I'll forever be grateful because I love luxury currently I work with luxury brands and it's like the best thing for me ever but um, 
digital not so much and so I ended up working for a luxury leather goods company and doing being their like luxury and digital intern assistant basically so I was basically an assistant for the digital and luxury team and it was a real adventure I'd say um, I've never really pursued anything digital in the past, but obviously digital is the future, you can always see with the metaverse and all these things. So I really wanted to learn how to do like fashion but in a digital in a digital way. So I learned about like merchandising, e-commerce sites, then I learned how to visual merchandise, like ski density and stuff like that. But yeah, I really learned how to do like marketing, um digital work, email marketing, email campaigns, um, all that stuff like Zadonk, um <laughs> what else? Zadonk. Um, Shopify, I really learned their like, e-commerce tools and stuff like that, but there I also learned that I don't really want to work for that side of fashion. I don't ever really want to work on the e-commerce side. E-commerce shoots and stuff I did there, and I like styling in general, and I like, like doing things like that, so that company kind of took my loves as well and helped me to tailor them to more like what it could be like if I was working like a real fashion business business, but yeah. There I kind of learned that that's not what I wanted to do, but I picked up so many valuable skills there. That was like a good three months of my life. And in the long term, three months isn't anything, but obviously being in school and stuff like that, it's so different working full time in something. When you see that like, you know, you don't have a half term halfway through. That is the biggest thing guys. If you're considering taking a gap year and you just come out of uni, just come out of A level, babes get used to annual leave. Like, you have to ask somebody if it's okay to take these days off and hope they're going to say yes. Because I think the biggest shock to me in the gap year was the fact that, like, adults work all through. Like, I know I'm an adult now too, but, like, they work all through. Like, you feel burnt out, you've got to get up, and you've got to come on Monday and do it all again. And it's like, I'm so grateful that, like, I have a family that's so supportive, and I'll get on to family and get up these after. But I have a family that's so supportive and stuff like that. But, Lord, there was times I wanted to drop out of that internship that I was doing. I did not want to do it anymore, I was not enjoying it, and you know like, I feel like you really find yourself in a gap here because things that you would normally not let slide at all, you find yourself letting them slide, and that's not to say it's not good to have boundaries, but like you earn, like you learn a, lot, a different level of perseverance, it's different to when you're doing exams, you've got to push through to make sure you get the best exit grades in your exams, you learn like how to persevere in your career, and how to really fight through, so I was going to drop out of that internship because I hated it, it was just like not what I wanted to do, the company culture wasn't too great, but obviously um, that's a different story for a different time, but like, I met some of the best people there ever, I made some of the best friends that I could have in the industry wise, all way above me, because as I said, I am at the time I was only 18, so I was just practically a baby just coming into the working world, but um, yeah, I made some of the best friends I could ever make, and realistically I learned amazing things, I gained a mentor there, like, I met amazing people and learned so much, but it was not what I wanted to do. So that carried me all throughout September to the end of November. And guys, it's so hard to say, but I think that workplace, because of the toxic culture and because of like, the work I was doing, I kind of fell out of love with fashion. Like, I fell out of love with fashion hard. And I kind of began to miss editorial, but then I reminded myself that, like, I took myself out of the editorial. I took myself out of my comfort zone to learn more about something else. So like obviously I was kind of regretting it at the time, but also it was also something that was like, Sharon, you're doing this for a big reason, you're doing this so you can find what you really want to do. That's not fashion editorial because you need to kind of be able to pivot with the times. And that's a big thing. In fashion you need to learn how to pivot. So yeah, so that kind of took me till the end of November and at the end of like November I just decided I don't want to work. <laughs> Which is the luxury of a gap year because you can actually just decide that you just don't want to do anything. Depending on how you are about money, I save a lot so I was quite okay, but um, I just didn't work. So from December to around January, I just kind of didn't work. I went to the gym, I like began to work on my blog. That's where I really, really, really pushed on my blog and decided, yes, yeah, it's time to launch my own blog. I really want to write. So I began, write, I began writing again and I was really missing it. I was doing like freelance things for a few like blog pages and like fashion shops and stuff like that. might have like little blogs on the side of their fashion shops. But um, yeah, I really pushed my blog then and kind of fell in love with my blogging again in terms of like me fat my site and stuff like that but yeah I didn't work I'd say for those two months my love for fashion was at like 20% normally I'm 100% my love for fashion was like 20 I was just demotivated I didn't like the way I felt as a person I just wasn't really happy and like the difference between school and like being in the world by yourself basically is that well teachers no one's really gonna ask you are you okay when you get to work like you come there to do your job you have to do your job whereas in school I was really more coddled <laughs> I'd say so that was the biggest 
thing. So if you're considering taking a gap year, be prepared to kind of have people around you, but you're going to be on your own. You've really got to know what you're doing this for, is what I'd say with the gap year. So yeah, that was the first three months of my gap year, basically, and they weren't the best. I learned a lot, but they weren't the best. But it does get better. I promise it gets better. Okay, cool. So we're going to move on to the next thing that happened. So I just told you guys about how those three months were quite dark months for me in terms of my career and in terms of like figuring out what I wanted to do. Obviously, in terms of life, if we're talking about you just finished your A-levels, sorry graduates, for a second, let's just go out and finish the A-levels. Actually, this could apply to graduates too, so graduates actually listen up. If we're talking about life in terms of everyone's just finished school, some people have moved on to go to university, you've chosen to be in the, like, in the working real world, you can't really relate to all your friends because some of your friends are literally just partying. Like, I remember, oh my gosh, be prepared. If you're going to take the gap year and you know your friends are partiers, me, I love a party. I love to party. I remember watching my Snapchat stories or watching my Instagram stories and seeing my friends were clubbing, seeing my friends were partying, having games nights. And I remember being in my bed, like, crap, like, maybe I should have gone to you. Like, <laughs> I'm all alone here. I don't really know where I'm doing. I don't, know, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going next. Like, did I make a mistake? But it's really, really important that you kind of keep the faith. And you're going to see why it's important to keep the faith. But yeah, so um, in that period of time where like December, January, always Christmas was coming up, so I was really excited for Christmas. So I spent a lot of time with family around then, but I still at the back of my mind had the fact that like I don't know what's coming next, like I don't know what I'm doing next. So obviously I was doing my freelance thing at the time and I was doing my um, blogging, but it was a very like slow two months. But then I decided to kind of get back on the horse. I kind of like research other fashion careers that were out there. Obviously I had a lot of friends in the industry that did different things. I've never really been a numbers person. Like I can do maths but I don't really love it. So I kind of knew that buying wasn't really what it was, wasn't really the vibe for me. I'd previously done a buying internship. I can talk about that another time. So I didn't really want to do buying or merchandising. Um, I still kind of wanted to be creative in my work but not too like fashion designing because I cannot draw to save my life. Um, if you listen to my podcast, you probably haven't said that every episode, but I cannot draw. So I knew fashion designer wasn't going to be what it was for me. Pattern cutting, um, I saw a few pattern cutting internships out there, but I knew I didn't want to be a garment technologist or a pattern cutter. So I just thought I don't really know what's coming. But then um, I ended up connecting with a friend and we went for coffee and she told me about fashion PR. So um, for those of you who don't know, fashion PR is like, public relations, how your brand basically goes out into the world and what it kind of like, how it's kind of transported out there. Um, so I basically like fell in love with PR in terms of like hearing what she does day to day. Obviously there's good bits and there's bad bits, but like that's where I really fell in love with PR. And I kind of said, oh, okay, like I'd love to give it a try. So then I discovered this really big PR agency and obviously I connected with a friend that worked there I kind of said, oh, like, I'd love to try it out for a little while, like, let's see what happens. So then obviously they brought me on and I was an account assistant there. And I did some account work with um, really cool brands like Levi's, Superdry, Converse, Lindex. Did some work with Barber too. But yeah, I just started working with like, those type of brands there. And I just learned that, like, wow, like, I, I didn't know what fashion PR was before I basically did this. So, um... I ended up doing some work with them and it was really really fun, like it was really fun, I really enjoyed it. Um, my time there was quite short, it wasn't as long as I wanted it to be but um, I learnt a lot being there and I made a lot of great friends and I learnt more that there was more to the industry than like a designer, a stylist, or a buyer, like there's so many careers that aren't really glamorised or advertised that really have a lot to it. Plus guys, I won't tell you the amount of free stuff I got while being there like it's crazy I filled up my wardrobe just on free clothes from being a PR so I kind of knew oh my gosh this incorporates my love of fashion and my love of clothes so yeah it incorporates my love of fashion and clothes but it also gives me that business side like the analytic side I love reporting I know I sound like a weirdo saying that but like stats figures I love collating it all and I love just seeing work come to fruition like I feel like reporting is like a good way to see satisfaction of like my hard work has resulted in this PR is like about results, it's about like how you get the brand out there. So I feel like with PR, PR is one of those careers that like you can see your work come to life really easily. Like say when a designer will like finish a garment and be able to see the final products, you know, PR will send things out and you'll see like in a few months time, look at it in a magazine, look at it on this celebrity when they went to like this VIP dressing, things like that. I find it really fun. So I just loved reporting. So PR kind of put my clothes love and my business tech savvy love together and I just ended up loving it. So after I left there, I ended up doing freelance products in PR. 
guys you can do freelance PR I think they call it like publish that you'd be a publicist or something like a PR publicist kind of in a freelance capacity but when I did my freelance work I ended up working with other commercial brands and kind of luxury brands and I just kind of like kept doing that kept networking this way I say be kind to everybody guys especially on gap year guys if you know how to if you need to be kind at any point in life your gap year is when you need to be the kindest person that you could ever be and make friends with everybody through like my work there and like being kind to people and keeping in contact with people especially on LinkedIn if you don't have a LinkedIn profile especially before you start your gap year start that LinkedIn profile and connect with everybody and anybody who will connect with you basically um <laughs> through being kind and just like taking initiative throughout my gap year I ended up doing some freelance work for some commercial brands and some luxury brands and um I did that for about a month a month and a half which was really fun. I attended a lot of cool events and that's when I got more into the events instead of PR. So I started working in PR for Afro Nation, Rolling Loud, um, kind of that side of PR and just like doing more concert and event stuff, which is so funny because when you think PR, um, fashion is all about like clothes and like, you know, models and celebrities, but then like everything's kind of come together, like fashion, culture, football, music. So I ended up working with like PR in the event side and I swear like working on like PR for Afro Nation was just amazing like from the talent to like all that goes into it it was just a really good learning experience so I ended up doing that and loved it so then after that I ended up being approached by a company I'd previously spoken to and they kind of saw the work I was doing were kind of keeping me on their radar and they approached me and asked me to basically talk to them about if I'd be interested in becoming an account coordinator and guys I hear how jumpy my year was I stopped doing my freelance things in around May I want to say and in June I got offered an account coordinator position at a luxury agency which is everything because it's like all your work has come full circle and guys you have to understand June, July, August, September, three months, two months practically before I basically deferred my entry last year and um three months before my degree stopped meant to start so that was nine months of hard work determination and grit that got me to the point where i'm now working with luxury clients i could only dream of working with luxury clients that like you go out and you tell people you work and they're like oh my gosh you work with them and my thing is that that is such a good feeling like i like feeling i like the feeling of being in the community oh sorry someone closed my door just now i like the feeling of being in the community i like the feeling of like working with people and having them recognise the work that I do. I like feeling valued and a lot of the clients I work for now are really valued and respected in the community that I am within as well as in the wider community around the world. So it's just great to be a part of something that is like worldwide and renowned and just know that I'm playing my own little part there at 19 years old. So obviously from there you can kind of gauge that the fact that like the gap year was not smooth sailing at all. My biggest worry with gap year was how would I be motivated if I don't have to set that alarm to get up at 8 a.m. every morning to get to here for 9 a.m. or something like that. But guys, I promise you and I recommend that every person takes a gap year, especially if you're a creative. University is amazing. I'm going to university in September. I still find that it it's useful for me. Speaking to people that are in positions that I want to be within the industry right now, speaking to them about my degree, they've recommended that I go to university and they've said that like when I come out, there's jobs here waiting for me. Like, there's jobs here waiting for me that can be paying southwards of 60k. And, like, being a graduate, you think, oh, that's not graduate salary, but, like, because I really put the work in before I went to university, now I know what I'm working towards during university, and when I come out, I know what I'm going for, if you get what I mean. I've been told about things abroad, all over the world, as well as being told about things in the UK. And I just know that the way I want to work and what I want to achieve, my gap year has made it all feasible and something that is... Something that I am able to accomplish. No one ever really spoke to me about a gap year before I decided to take it. I kind of only took it because I didn't know what else I would do if I didn't take a gap year. School wasn't looking like the vibe at all. So I just knew that the gap year kind of had to happen because I had to kind of find myself. I recommend everyone takes a gap year. Not even just because you might want to claw your way into the industry. But because number one... You find yourself. I know things now about myself that I would never have known if I didn't take this year. I know what I like to a T and I know what I don't like. And like I've just set boundaries in my life in terms of relationships and in terms of career boundaries that I never thought I'd be able to set. I'm the first like account coordinator at 19 in Europe. Like hard work has gotten me here. And some people might look at it like, why are you even going to uni? You don't need to go to uni. But it's like now I'm going to university for me. Like I know what I'm going for, I know what I'm going to achieve when I go there. So if you're like in between, like if your mind is not necessarily 
I want to go to university 100% then I'd say do not rush into something you're not ready for and take that year. I have friends that take gap years also like me, not wanting to work in fashion necessarily but just doing other things and they're enjoying their time, being young and being free. I would say take a gap year while you have no commitments necessarily because it's a lot worse when you have to work for somebody and you have to do something for some people. Whereas if you're doing it for you and you're just focusing on you completely, you'll be able to achieve everything you kind of want to achieve and more. So I 100% recommend taking a gap year. If you're lost or if you're confused about what you want to do next, take it. Even if you know what you want to do next, unless you're like trying to do medical like doctor stuff and stuff like that or like lawyer stuff, take the year to travel, take the year to adventure, take the year to meet people. Like someone so close to me and someone that I respect and value so much said to me, you have your whole life to work, Sharon. So while you can do school and it's like, it's fun and like hard, obviously it's like a lot of debt, like of course you have to take that into consideration, but like while you can meet people and adventure and learn more about different cultures, take it because why would you want to start working before you need to? Like unless you really, really want to work, but trust me guys, when you get deep, deep, deep into work, you learn that you can get burnt out so easily. So why would you force yourself to work before you really need to work? Like, why would you force yourself to work before you need to have, like, pay bills and stuff like that? If you get what I mean? So I'd say take the year to find yourself, discover what you love, discover what you hate, and just know that when you come out of university, or when you do go to university to study your degree, you kind of know what you're coming out to, you know what to expect when you're coming out. So yeah, that's my opinion on the gap year. I hope it made sense. I hope my advice has worked and I really really hope you liked my video. Please leave a like, comment and subscription below and I'll see you on my next video which is very soon.